All right, um, in this video, like I said before, sometimes you have to reinstall, if you're keeping Windows and you're doing a dual boot, you gotta uh, reinstall Windows after you installed Linux, and that overwrites the boot partition, leaving you unable to boot Linux, booting straight into Windows. Um, and At best, sometimes you don't even get that. Sometimes uh, you don't get to boot at all, but usually it just makes you boot right back into Windows uh, with no option to boot Linux. That's because Microsoft's a shitty company, and they, they cheat people any way they can out of freedom of choice, which is why I uh, won't even put them their products on my hard drive. Anyway, to fix that without reinstalling Linux all over again, you got to rebuild your master boot record on the, um, well, it should be on under your root file system, but it might be under its own partition. Anyway, um, how to do that is stick your install CD back in, hit enter for, uh, I'm sorry, go down to rescue installed system, hit enter. Now this is going to take a minute, but uh, anyway, you're going to go into rescue mode and go into the ter command line, shell prompt, whatever you want to call it, command prompt, um, and you're going to manually tell it to rebuild the file or the uh, bootloader on the master boot record and it sounds daunting and this actually is a very aggravating task not because it's difficult because theoretically it's very simple you just type one or I'm sorry two simple little commands and you're done however depending on the way your system was installed to begin with which is why I strongly recommend against installing the boot uh, uh, directory on a separate partition of its own which a lot of people prefer I strongly recommend against it because it just further complicates things um, but that's not the only factor or I'm sorry variable that gets factored into uh, the complexity of this um, there for example which partition is Linux installed on period uh, you could have installed Linux on SD3 4 HD whatever it, depending on the way you installed it where you installed it and the naming scheme that the kernel picks up which if you've got any recent version of Fedora it should be SD instead of HD uh, A, B, and C but um, a lot of things can be a pain in the ass so anyway what it's gonna do is it's gonna create its own temporary file system in memory um, for those of you who aren't too familiar with computers in general what happens when you put in a live CD or any CD at all with an operating system on it, it creates a, a file system directory structure in memory to work from. It doesn't. It's not actually on a disk anywhere. It's just a fake imaginary one in memory that it uses to work with. And what it's going to do is create its own file system, boot itself up, and mount your file system. In other words, attach your real file system that you can't boot into. Uh, under its imaginary directory structure under a certain folder okay hit your choose your language go and choose your keyboard layout and go and uh, do not start network interfaces because you'll have to wait for that all to get configured and why the fuck would you need to start your network interfaces when you're trying to rebuild your bootloader um, you don't see that option yet but it's gonna come up uh, anyone anyway, I thought it, sh it should have been up by now watch be my luck it's gonna skip it this time Anyway, it's going to mount your real file system under a folder in its fake file system, and you'll have to change into that, change your root directory to that folder's, um, to your fake file. Okay, here, select no for network interfaces. Select continue. It's just telling you it's going to mount your file system read write, which you have to mount it read write, because if you mount it read only, you can't rebuild Grub, rebuild your bootloader. Um, anyway, what you're going to have to do is change the root directory, your root working system directory, to uh, the one of your real Linux installation, which is located under one of the directories of this imaginary file system that this runs off of in memory. So you'll use the change root command, which is C-H-R-O-O-T, and then forward slash mount, which is M-N-T, and then forward slash sys image s y s i m a g y and here you see the command displayed in front of you right now it's telling you what command you got to enter to change the root uh, shell root shell prompt root directory root structure or root directory structure from the current one that's running out of memory for the cd